Hi everyone, it's Kasia from One Side at a Time. I had a great chat with Rich from Niagara Cider Company today, but we had a few technical difficulties. Unfortunately, the first two takes of our video got lost on Instagram, but please enjoy the last half an hour of take three. Let's see. Thank you so much everybody for coming back. There, you're moving, you're moving. <laughs> Yeah, I was trying to do I was trying to do like the Niagara Cider frozen dance, and then of course yeah. it, it, the live stopped on my end. So clearly I'm like, somebody's like, get this person off. I'm like, third time's a charm. We have to we have to get them on. Yeah, thanks for your patience. Thanks everyone who's watching. I think you saw Rebecca there for a second, and Rebecca, yeah, helps to run our social media. So she does a great job of doing what you do a lot, which is uh, nice. creating an online presence. So that's great. Hi, Rebecca. That's my that's my youngest daughter's name. So oh, she must be yeah. fabulous, I yeah. guess, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Cool. Now, so, what, yeah. Talk to me. What else do you want to chat about? I, I want to know um, what other flavors we can expect from you. Mm. And and I really like I'll, and you know I'll just take it this time to let you know I like cranberry. And <laughs> um, anyone else? Listen, and okay. what about a hop cider? Any chance you're gonna do? Ooh, I'm I'm, I'm semi converted. Um, Yes, we are working on a top secret um, collaboration um, for a hop cider. So um, that will be this year, I believe. Um, I don't want to give out too many details, but I think it's going to be widely available and uh, widely tasty. <laughs> a top secret. Okay. Well, yeah. you said, you said a co like a collaboration. Wait a second. Okay. Yeah. Because we, you need a brewery. Maybe in a few months we can uh, discuss who that will be with and uh, where it'll be available, but it should be in the fall. And yeah, I've made um, a bunch of hop cider uh, um, in the lab, <laughs> uh, working with different hops. Are there any hops that you like specifically, Kasia? No, I'm, no. I'm just testing oh. the waters. There's only right now one brand that, it's the Duxbury. I didn't like it, they know this. Yeah. I didn't like it the first time. <laughs> I couldn't stand it. I told yeah. them, even in my review, I was like, I'm not even talking about your hop cider. And then everyone kept saying to me, you have to try it again. You have to try it again. And then um, I, I said, okay, fine. But I put it in a champagne flute. And for some reason, I liked it at that time. Look, he's making us jealous, everybody. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I had to do your reaction face, too. Someone asked if I could do your face. I was like, there. Um, and uh, so I'm just, I'm just like, because I, I never, I was never like a beer fan. And then obviously, like with celiac disease, you know, gluten-free beer, yeah. you know, the first one was like a rice beer and that, nah. So you'll have to let me know a little bit more about kind of what hops are good for cider or not, but. Right, it's kind of like that botanical thing where some go well and some not so much. Uh, and I think with this collaboration, we'll do a bunch of, I try to do like test batches in five or 10 liter containers and just like line up a bunch of them and then get um, fun people like you to try them and see what, um, you know what is appreciated so yeah we'll be doing some some work on that and i will let you know so definitely a hop cider we are okay. working on a cider seltzer as well for the summer okay and uh it's gonna be yeah just like you know about four percent alcohol um pretty low sugar like two three grams just like a negligible amount and okay. uh, yeah, I uh, will get you, you're working on the can image for that one, which is fun. Um, but yeah, that's another, um, at Blackburn where we're doing uh, some of our small batch work, we will be having that one going in the next, uh, in the next month or two. Okay, so what, what, um, what actually, the cider seltzer, I, I've never tried mm -hmm. one, it scares me <laughs> because it does. I like, you know, because as a kid, I used to like New York seltzer, you know, those drinks in the bottle. Do you yeah, know yeah, what those? Yeah, 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 yeah. See, well, I, we had this other chat. No one knew what I was talking about. I think they were all too young. I yeah. don't know how old you are. <laughs> you know, I'm just aging right now. Um, but you know those, right? <laughs> 44? Did you say 44? 44. What, when's your birthday? Um, September 23rd, 1977. <laughs> okay. I'm older than you. Okay. That's okay. But we both know about New York seltzer. But wait, that's all that matters. And now we know, I'll know his birthday. And so we'll have to write, I guess we're supposed to write that down somewhere. So no I wanted to be everybody. very specific about that. I know. I love the year too. I was born in. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, the New York seltzer, the black cherry, that was the one I loved. And then, okay. uh, you know, root beer sort of let me down. So when I hear seltzer, I'm like, mm, I, I don't know. So what, what, like, what, is what does it? it taste like? What does a cider seltzer taste like? I've it, never. It, it tastes like um, a light version of a cider. Like, and really, really, I mean, to be totally honest about it, it's like a watered down cider. And not like, it could be anywhere from 25% to more. It depends on the alcohol content that you have when you start and what you want to get to. So the idea with the seltzer is for it to be light and easy drinking, lower alcohol, mm -hmm. lower sugar. I mean, the seltzer, seltzer market is enormous in Ontario. I think I heard it. Yeah, like um, like seltzer RT, RTDs are like, an, you know, just hugely popular. I think that they're not, they are what they are, right? I think they're, I think for health reasons, like the reasons that you got into drinking um, mm -hmm. cider, a lot of people are turning to those for, for similar reasons where they want to have something social um but it's a little more like clean to drink right so um but i think that what i like with the cider version i think it's a little more authentic um there's there's more of a process to the ingredients um what we're trying to do is make one that has some flavor still because a lot of times you know there are companies you know it's becoming increasingly popular and i think the finished product can be a little cardboardy and flat so we're just trying to like develop one that um is drinkable so it'd be like hot summer day you can be by the pool and have you know three or four of them and uh and still feel like pretty good and coherent so <laughs> coherent so you're trying to get that over this summer you said yeah so we're through okay. again through our retail space and online shop we'll have that available it won't be widely available until maybe we'll see maybe next year but um okay. but yeah we'll have like when we do smaller batches, we'll have something in the neighborhood of say 140 or 150 cases. And okay. uh, um, yeah, and so we'll go through it. And if we, we can always do another one if it's really popular and, and runs through. But I like the initial uh, um, test batches. I think they're, it, you know, it's, it's pretty drinkable. And I think there's a, there's a place for it. So it's like cider, but just like lighter and easier. And is it just the is it just the apple flavor or like are you going to be yeah we're working on like a tropical it's I, I kind of wrestle with this because with niagara cider a lot of what we've done with our each cider is like niagara centric right like so our the berries and the rose gold come from uh, a farm called the fenwick berry farm um they grow an enormous number of berries and they're delicious and beautiful so we like soak them right in the tank right we're not adding like juice to create a color like we're actually getting hand-picked berries and putting them in the tank. And I think that's what one of the reasons it tastes so freaking good. Um, and so with our peach Chardonnay, we're using like Niagara Chardonnay and we're using Niagara peaches and um, infusing the beverage with that. So I've kind of like wanted to keep it that way, but I think for like a summer seltzer, I'm, I'm yeah, looking towards more of like tropical fruit, which is hard to find. I keep looking, but can't <laughs> find it here in Niagara. Um, yeah, it's, it's found at like the, the local supermarket. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so it's going to be uh, a blend of tropical flavors, I think. Okay, and that's for next summer, right? Hopefully. Well, no, we'll have some for this June, I think. Oh, for the summer. Okay. Yeah. Now, but this, the the new one, the Bee, Beekeepers Botanical, that's on the small batch, right? Like that's, you're, you're, you're pushing that? No, right like, now it's a small batch. So we, okay. we did about 2,000 liters of it. Mm -hmm. Like, so um, yeah. So again, we'll have about 150 cases and okay. depending on the flow, we can, you know, I think we can within another like eight weeks or 12 weeks, we can like, we can soak another batch and, and can it. So. so that's how fast you're, you're able to produce your cider? Um, uh, well, we have cider, like one? we have cider, like it depends on the cider. So we have like different batches going all the time. So if say we want to do a smaller batch, we can draw off um, a larger tank and into a smaller tank and then and just do the soaking and canning part. So we have like um, fermented cider ready to go and then we can um, do the flavoring and the soaking separately. Okay, so like um, as a, in a ballpark, as a ballpark, from start to finish, how long to, how long from, from, how long from like yeah. conception to birth? Yeah, 12 weeks, you know, oh, something yeah? like okay. that. Yeah. Okay, well that's pretty good. Now can I ask you about um, sizes? So the can sizes. So there's a lot of debate, a lot of uh, like, you know, there's times that people like 473, there's times that people like 355 mil. Mm -hmm. um, what was your, because cause your alcohol level is pretty low, isn't it? Or what is? The alcohol level per volume? Um, it's 6%. Yeah. So, for, for... yeah, we got the line up here. And 
Yeah. This is one that is a little higher. This is the sugar's pretty high in our golden russet apple, so it's eight percent. Um, okay. Yeah, these are all four seventy threes. Yeah. And um, yeah, three fifty fives. I'm interested. I think for like a seltzer, especially like that, that's a good size to use. And some people are starting to use those like slim cans as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, um, what's your preference? Depends on the size and depends on the time of day. So um, my usual, I usually prefer uh, the four seventy three. Um, and that's just because I, I enjoy it. I like to, to pour in a glass and have it take its time. Um, but not, I mean, if, if sometimes the smaller ones are so much higher in alcohol, like some of the 355s are, you know, over seven and a half percent. Um, to me, for me, that's, that's, that's a little bit of a shock to my system for me to, but, um, but generally I'm okay with the 475. Um, but you have your stay gold. That's the only one that you have in glass, right? Yes. And how come that one's not canned? Uh, it was a pretty small batch. Um, okay. I think it's a um, it's a really high quality cider. Golden russet apples are hard to come by. Mm -hmm. um, again, like I was saying earlier, they're one of the few apples that can make a really great um, single varietal cider. So right. I think the glass just gives it a little more of like, this is very special. Like it's all special, but like this is you know more unique. So. Okay. Any, any thoughts on, on switching any of the other ones to glass? Like a, a, even doing like a 750, um, I don't know, like for the for the rose gold? Hmm. Maybe any if there's a, a special release, you know, I think we're um, like just at the point now where we have this retail space available and I think over time we'll be doing more of that. Uh, when I was mentioning earlier, some of these um, British and French, like really old apple varieties, if we're doing like small batches of say 300 liters or 600 liters i think glass would be perfect like a 750 bottle a lot of the cider that we made um at home when i started fermenting was in um those like brownish 750 mil bottles and and they're great too they it depends if you've got another person there they can be great a little tougher mm -hmm. like you know on your own all the time but uh um yeah the glasses i mean people love cans right so they're yeah. they're really they transport well and they are durable um, but I think, yeah, when you've got, uh, maybe a more unique cider, like I could see us using glass, but, uh, a couple of the facilities that we work with have, um, bottling operations too, which makes it, e you know, a little easier to get that done. Um, some of the hand filling of bottles can, you know, it can be time demanding, um, okay. whereas like canning lines are really, really efficient. Um, so there's a number of, yeah, I think the cost of glass and it has to sort of like carry over to like the finished product. And, and yeah, I think if we have like a really unique cider glass is maybe, you know, a nice thing to have. And in the future, we'll have more of that. I think, I think it's, um, I mean, I agree with what you said because you, you kind of need somebody, you need somebody else there, right? I mean, it's a 750 yeah. now, but if you're looking at it, um, you know, if you're looking at it, bring it to a table as opposed to like a wine, you know, and you had something special like that. Yeah, for sure. um, the beauty of it is just is, is really nice. That's why I, I, I can't drink like I, I, I'm fine with cans, but I can't drink it if a can because I like to I like to look at it. I like to right. smell it. I like totally. to see all the bubbles yes. and and uh, yeah, gorgeous. Totally. Um, I agree with you. It's funny. I think sometimes like when you look at wine and what people will pay for a bottle, I mean, to pay 20 or 30 bucks isn't outrageous. I mean, you can get some good wine for 10 or 15 um, dollars. But um, when you look at cider in a can, right, like someone might say, oh, this peach Chardonnay is like 425. But that's two thirds of a bottle, right? So if you scaled up to 750, that's like six bucks. And um, but I think yeah, I think there's definitely potential for that to grow. I'd love to see in the LCBO starting to like go through like the wine section and having some really good ciders. I mean, we make such great cider in Ontario. There's a lot of great um, cider makers and cider companies. Um, and it, I think there's a huge market. It takes time to like infiltrate, yeah, you know, of course. infiltrate it sometimes, but I'd really love to see like a little section of, even if it was like eight or 10 bottles where you could get um, some, some unique bottled cider um, in 750s. So I, there's a few that do it in Toronto, but yeah, more of that would be great, so. Yeah. I saw, I found one at my LCBO, my LCBO, um, the one that I like to go to, not the one that's at Square One here. Yep. Um, I guess I'm totally dissing that one, but it's really, it's the cider is, um, uh, stock is just not there. Um, the, but there's another one that has more ciders and they, um, the only bottle that they have was uh, actually a French one. So, which, which is fine. I mean, there's like other companies that have them and, and I'm not, um, 
you know, I'm not uh, going to the store specifically looking looking for that. But but I, I think it's an, an an option too. That I mean, that some people don't even realize because a lot of people. I mean, I love wine as well. Um, you know, my my family knows that. But um, but to to bring someone a bottle of cider too is just uh, I think would be would be great every now and then yeah. as well. It's, they're just they're just so beautiful. Yeah, for sure. I see hubby with the views uh, comment there, like time and politics, and you know that there's a lot of truth to that. So. Um, but I mean, the cider world has exploded, right? There's like a way more interest, way more cideries and yep, time, time in politics. <laughs> That's but great. It, it can make a great gift. And, uh, you yeah. know, doing what you're doing by ordering online is, uh, is a good start. And, and, and you can see what cider does. Like one of the, one of the ciders that we fermented this year from a crab apple made, um, almost 11% alcohol. Uh, it's very wine-like and, uh, um, that's the cool thing with cider. It's got that like the best of beer and the best of wine, right? It's like drinkable like beer, but complex like wine, uh, which makes it super fun. So I think there's there's still, we actually see like really good growth. I think, is it like 25% growth last year in cider sales in the LCBO? That's like, that's pretty great. And I think we're, I think it's gonna happen for another five or 10 years of just like more and more people getting into it because you do, I think you, yeah, there's, there's a lot of benefit to that. And it is like Ontario products, right? Like Ontario mm -hmm. apples, which is nice. Yeah, I know it's 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 nice to see that explosion too of um, the cider community. I think it just feels like it's this um, has really come together a lot over the past year as well. Yes, it's, and it's, I think a lot of like super friendly and engaged people, right? And I find yeah. this open collaboration um, when I talk to cider makers and different uh, um, cider companies. It's 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 refreshing, not just the cider, but the people. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I always say this too. It's like there's there's no there's no no one's there's no. Um, no one's pretentious, you know, there's no, um, uh, there's nothing off putting us. There's like, it's such a camaraderie in the community. It's just, it's really great to just chat people about people. And like you said, for a collaboration, it's not, you know, um, like the people won't talk to you or, or anything. It's, it's, it's great. It's just so nice and refreshing. Yeah. You found that a lot in what you're doing. Uh... Absolutely. Absolutely. And when we did, I know that you guys weren't able to join us last time, but, um, each the beginning the first Saturday of each month, I just host a zoom on a, um, cider chat and it's a uh, cider reviewer cider influencers and cidery and we had three um, cider makers joining us last month and Great. it was just so nice to hear them bounce ideas off each other because it's it was just it was just fabulous and then we were bouncing ideas off of them what we like what we don't like um, things that we were drinking and how we felt about them and just sort of like the future of cider and it like, for, you know, specifically for, for Ontario, even though we re reach globally. Um, but we just had such a high concentration of, of, uh, um, uh, people from Ontario. So absolutely. It was, it was great. It's like two hours later and, uh, you know, we're on our third ciders and right. it, it's just, it was, it was a really great, uh, comfortable time to just have a, have a chat and, uh, and, really just bounce ideas that's it and just feedback and that's what i found too is like all the people that i get to talk to it's i i just really i just really want to 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 meet you know i mean this way because it's safe this way um to meet the people making the ciders that i'm enjoying and 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 for other people to see what's out there and how much we have to offer from the province it's just great yeah, you seem to dive right in there, and uh, thanks for bringing people together and uh, providing this this space to share ideas. I look forward to taking part in one of those nights. Yes, great, good. Well, May first, Saturday, May first is the okay. next one. It'll just be the first Saturday, so if you can't make it, this okay. I'm not, I'm not offended. We just had this conversation in front of everybody, but that's that's okay. But which of your ciders, Rich, is your favorite? Like, which one are you like? Which is your go-to uh... of, of yours? Of yours. Well, when they first come out, you know, like this, I think this uh, Beekeepers Botanical is going to be a go-to for a little while since it's it's uh, fresh. I, I mean, I'm, I, I think partial to rose gold. Like it, I never really it. Like they all don't get old, but the rose gold is is pretty special. I think again, like soaking that fruit in the tank, and in working with like that amount of fruit, like this last batch, we put like two thousand pounds of of. Uh, of Niagara berries and I can't even believe they grow that that much but they've got you know a great farm operation we actually work with about um, 12 Niagara farmers to to get our um, fruit and, uh, and, and and wine from so it's wow. uh, um, it, it's, it's great to do that but I'm really yeah the rose golds uh, it, it hits it every time so I'm happy with that one nice <laughs> 
And if you were to grab one that wasn't one of yours, what, what, what are some other ones? Like from, from, the, you don't from like Ontario? Any, don't worry. Yeah. From Ontario? Oh, no, no. no, no, from anywhere. It's okay. You can, like, what you would actually, if you open your fridge and you're like, this is my go-to that I didn't make. Right. Um, gosh, great question. I mean, I've, I've had them all. I think um, <laughs> we're seeing a more, t you know, towards the profile of, you know, of Niagara cider. Um, I, I, some of them aren't available at the LCBO too, right? Like I really like um, Hardway cider. I, you know, right. I love the, I love, I mean, they're doing a great job. Um, the dryness, the flavor, um, and some really good experimentation. I, um, you know, Revel, you know, does a great, a great job as well. Um, you know, with cider, I do. Our friends at Duxbury make, make great cider as well. Uh, yeah, I think. Yes, we we have a pretty good collection, you know, of cider. I think mm -hmm. it's uh, it depends what you you know what you like, um, and what you know what your meal is, and, and who you're you know who you're spending time with. Um, yeah, I do enjoy the collective art cider as well. You know, it's like it's got that like. I, you know, that, like a drier profile. So mm -hmm. yeah, good mix. How about you? My, my go-tos, my go-tos are always dry. So um, um, in terms of the ones that, that you've mentioned, Hardway, um, I found that, yeah, absolutely. I, like, I love the bone dry, uh, the Renegade and the Ramboozle. And I yes. just uh, got my order of the Devil's Cut Ramboozle. I'm not sure if you've okay. tried that. I have not, no. Okay, I haven't tried it yet because the alcohol level it, is like over 9.5 something so i have that um revel i've tried there i love their sonata the the cherry because i know they do it with the pits and everything yeah so yeah like, yeah it's there's excellent. no yeah coin with sweetness um duxbury um the, my favorite duxbury is the orange the original side road yeah yeah that's my that's my favorite one from them um and then other ones in ontario duntroon duntroon yep. net zero absolutely yep. um the rain dance also also because the rhubarb I was so scared when I heard about it, but um, love that one. You're, and you're, then you're, um, you're, have fear issues with rhubarb. Uh. You know what? I thought it was going to be pie, right? Okay. So because yeah. I'm thinking rhubarb, you know, the rhubarb used to grow. Maybe it's pie. Maybe yeah. it's jam. I wasn't gonna drink it, but I love it. Yeah, it does it, pretty well right? with apple for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's not, and they have no sugar, so it's really nice and dry. Um, I have, I have way too many. Oh, and then from the Niagara area, actually, Drink Brunch. Did you have you heard of them? They just came out. It's like the mimosas and strawberry yes, cider. Yes, yes, yeah. I think. Right? Sorry, I think is it? Yeah, Kim. Um, Kim yeah, and Michelle. I, yeah, uh, yeah. I, uh, I have not had it yet, though. But yeah, look okay. forward to trying it. Yeah. That's okay. Um, their uh, mimosa is actually quite dry. It's just a hint of um, orange juice in it. And then they have a strawberry cider as well. Yep. And then um, and then I still like shiny is rosé. It's like, you know, that's okay. probably if I'm going to Niagara. I, I, I could talk here about all of these ciders I like too much, I guess. Um, what else do I like? Well, you already know how I feel about yours. I already was talking to everybody about um, the, the peach chardonnay, the rose gold, and then the number one dry. And, and before when you were frozen, I already, I told everyone how to, they have to order the trifecta, but, sure. but now they'll have to do the trifecta and then the case of the botanicals on the yes. side, right? Cause I don't think that was in the mix pack that I was no, looking on there. Yeah, it's on there now. It's yeah. on, it's on there now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then which I know I'm probably missing a whole bunch and people are probably like, Oh, but you wrote this review on this one. Um, I just don't like the really sweet ones. Right. So yeah, I'm going to stay away true. from, well, I'll, I'll tell you who I'm staying away from. I'm going to stay away from like the summers bee and the growers and the, yeah. um, I'm not a strong bow fan. Um, there's some other, um, Toronto cideries that are just uh, certain flavors are just too sweet for my palate. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, um, uh, yeah, I think, I think those I, I like I like dry I like tart I like you know a punch in the in the face um, yeah. of uh, a bit of sourness. Yep, uh, I'm really you know excited to see more market share. Head, you know, and, and the work that you do really helps to educate people on Ontario craft cider. Um, like to see the numbers, it's incredible what percentage of Ontario cider sales are those large companies, right? So Ontario craft cider is a much smaller portion relative to those bigger companies. And, um, you know, I, I think we're in this transitional time where people's palates are, are going to like drier products. I mean, you can see it in seltzer, but you look at the sugar content of a lot of those ciders and it can be like 70 grams per liter, right? Like that's an enormous amount of sugar. Like if you, I mean, 
and people can complain about a hangover and alcohol, but I mean, if you have like four or five cans of Coca-Cola, you're probably not going to feel great the next day. I mean, the sugar's just um, off the charts. So I think seeing things transition to like drier products and, and more interested in Ontario craft, it, you know, it's happening and I'd love to see that continue. So mm -hmm. thanks for your part in that. <laughs> Oh, anything. What, what else can we do? Well, uh, well, where would you like to see um, Niagara Cider Company going? Would you, would you ideally like to be on the shelves everywhere else in Beale? Would you like to be selling direct? I know you're in a lot of the bars in Niagara region, right? We are, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. been a tough time for bar and restaurant sales, uh, naturally. If things were opening up there a bit, so we saw a good push um, of kegs moving out and, uh, and product moving out. But yeah, we look forward to that time when, when things open up and we can distribute that way. I think we're gonna have a growing presence in the LCBO. We, mm -hmm. we want to strike that balance where we are both widely distributed with our main um, products that um, are quality and represent Ontario and Niagara ingredients, but then also have the craftier small batches that you can't get anywhere. I think we see a separation between those two things with cider companies. We want to be both of those. And uh, um, so we'll have our main products that um, you know, represent a certain taste profile, but then have an increasing number of small batch uh, unique stuff. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how are things um, there? Because I know you have your, um, like, I mean, with the COVID regulations and everything there, um, what sort of precautions, um, what would you like us to do if we, if we wanted to come make an order and pick it up? Is like, what's the protocol now with, uh, with obviously with COVID? Um, right here. I mean, we have curbside pickup and yeah. uh, we have, yeah, we, like we have a stocked fridge and a retail space of all our products. So yeah, you can just call um, Blackburn Brew House where we have our, our retail space and, and walk in and, or walk in and come get it, right? So, and then we have our online sales too. So it's pretty pretty straightforward, hopefully for now, right? And things can open up and people can come to the bar and, uh, and have like one of these. Yeah, everyone take a look at them. Yeah. If you if you have not tried their um, their ciders, you go go online, make an order. Um, I'm telling you, like you will not be disappointed. I mean, <laughs> if, despite the sure look of uh, uh, Rich's face when he had the beekeeper <laughs> mechanical. I mean, I well, that's all we can go by is how much he likes it. And so I think if the cider maker is enjoying it, then I think uh, everyone else should be taking another look at that too. Yeah, yeah, it's a good start. It's a good start. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, Kasha, it's been thank like you. so fun talking to you. Yeah, and, likewise. You know, sorry about all those uh, technical difficulties. Why are you saying but... that was all, that was all over here? So no, uh... no, I I kicked. I think somehow I kicked myself out of my own live. I I, I have that talent, I guess. But I... but really, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be fun if it if, right? if it was too, yeah. like, too perfect. Thanks for taking but... the time uh, to, no. to do this and uh, making it happen. And let's do it again anytime. Please. Uh, oh. Contact me. I'm going to hold you to that and I have right. witnesses because this was just, this was just great talking with you. And uh, thank you so much for everything you do for the, uh, to contribute to the Ontario cider um, industry and what you do for us. And you make dry ciders from the heart and uh, um, really, really, it's not definitely. only do they taste great, but I mean, your like your cans, they're really, really beautiful, really nice. Um, but um, what I was going to say before that, I'm going to give you one more compliment before, before, um, before I let you go enjoy your evening. Um, what I like about your ciders, because um, I like the dry ciders, and, and sometimes I like cider that's organic and, and kind of funky. But what I like about yours is that they are dry, but then crisp and clean. And then they leave me feeling like what I had was like an elegant mouth experience. Mm. You know, um, it really feels like that. It doesn't feel like I just had something that tasted like sandpaper because I like dry, but some dry, dry ciders are just, you know, too dry, too dry I, um, or the no flavor. And yours really has that. So I will. Thank you. Yeah, I, I like those words you use, an elegant mouth experience. That's what we're going for. You nailed it. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, I'm yeah. glad. OK, Great. maybe we'll see you May 1st, Kasha. Oh, sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. And if All not, right. it'll be the next week or I'll chat with you another time. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. Take Bye. care. Bye.